Hello everyone, this will be the first video in a series of tutorials that will be uploaded to this channel along with other launches and things for the team. Uh, but this first video is going to be based on Overleaf, um, which is a uh, software that we use. It's a text editor uh, to do report writing and that you may use in some of your classes, uh, but that's especially if you're an electrical or a computer engineering student. Uh, mechanical students don't really have to use Overleaf at all. Uh, so we'll jump in here. Uh, first thing that you want to do is you want to get to the Overleaf website. So first thing we'll do just type in Overleaf to Google. Uh, it'll be the first option here, overleaf.com. Uh, it's an online LaTeX uh, editor. LaTeX is just the language that we use here. Uh, so this is the landing screen. Uh, when you first join, you're going to have to hit register up here in the top right. I already have an account, so I'm going to hit login, use your UMICH email, and then make yourself a password, and you hit login. And this is the landing screen. Uh, so this will show all of your projects that you have, as well as some other options here, which we can go over from left to right. Uh, first here, you've got an option to make a new project. You can make a blank one, an example one, or you can upload one. So let's say somebody else on the team or you've received something from a classmate. Uh, they give you a .tech file. Uh, you can just upload that here and then uh, it'll show up here in your project list. Uh, you can sort your projects similar to you can with other things, folders, things like that. Uh, and then all your projects will show up here in one big list. Uh, they're sorted on how long ago they were edited, and you can see who last edited them if uh, it's shared with anyone else. Uh, but if it's just by you, then you'll just see you as the owner, and then last modified by you. Uh, but like I said, they're shown in order of uh, the last one that you worked on, so that can be helpful, especially if we're working on the report. Alright, so let's find the electrical report, which is what we'll be using for this guy here, for this tutorial. Here we are. So we'll open them up. Alright, so this is the editor page. While this compiles, we can go over the screen a bit here. Uh, so in the top left, this is your way to get back to the menu. If you open this, here we are. You can just head back uh, right to where you were before in case you need to open up another project. Uh, right below this, you have your options uh, for adding different files and folders. Um, so any pictures that you want to import, you've got to have in this list. You can see in this document, we've got a lot of pictures. Uh, it's over 100 pages, so we've got to have a lot of pictures in there. Uh, and then you can also rename and delete things here as well. Uh, right below this, you've got the file outline. Uh, it's fairly useful, uh, as long as your document is set up for it. Um, you can click around to different points in your document based on what sort of section headers you have, uh, which can be useful when your documents start to get really long, as they do with the uh, full team reports there. But all right. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're adding in pictures is it's good to name them by project. So, for example, if we've got pictures for the air brake motor controller, they all start with ABC. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier to find in this list, especially when they get so uh, large like this. Uh, folders are another thing that you can use. However, one thing to keep in mind with that is uh, if you have to transfer things between documents, you've got to rebuild the folder structure each time, which can be more difficult than it's worth. But all right, so let's continue on to the left here. Uh, in this pane, you're going to have where you actually do your typing. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of code and things up here at the front. We'll go over how this is set up a bit later. Uh, but this is where you actually do all your typing for everything. And then over here is the actual document, so what it looks like at the end. Uh, so every time you make a change and you want to see what it looks like, you can hit recompile or you can set it to auto recompile. I just have mine on recompile uh, manually because it's such a large document. It takes a lot of time to recompile. Here you can see all of the outputs. Uh, so if there's a red or an orange number here, those are errors or warnings uh, that you might want to take care of just so everything is looking nice. Uh, and then you've got the download PDF button. So whenever you are done with your document and you want to save it to turn it in, like on Canvas or something, or give it to uh, one of the leads, you can download it. Like I said, this document is large, so it takes a bit of time. And then you could just open it with any PDF viewer and then you can just scrub through it just like you normally would. All right, up here on the top right, uh, we've got our different buttons here. Uh, the main button that you need to be concerned with is the share. Uh, so when you want to give somebody else a link, uh, or if you're trying to give it to multiple people, uh, you can just put the link in whichever chat you want to put it in, Teams or Discord or something, uh, to give that link out. And then everyone who has this can just join up and edit it. Anyone with this one can view it. And you can just uh, you can choose people individually by emails as well, if you're just trying to talk to a couple people. And if you've already given out the link and you want to turn it off, you can just hit turn off, and then you'll be all set. And then this pane here, like I said, this is what it looks like on the output, uh, just a standard PDF viewer. 
you can resize these as much as you want so that everything looks nice for you. Um, I just like to keep mine right in the middle there. All right, so now let's go through a bit about how this side is set up, your writing side here. Uh, one thing that I want to do before this is uh, a good tool that you're going to want to use because you're not going to remember a lot of the commands uh, right away. Uh, you can look up just a LaTeX cheat sheet. LaTeX cheat sheet. Go over to images. And here we are. Uh, you see there's a lot of different ones here. Find one that you like. Open it up. Don't want to save the image. I just want to open it here. Here we are. And then you can take a look through. Um, you can see different packages, different titles. Uh, because the way that it works is for LaTeX. When you just type something in normally, it will just show up on the next document. Uh, so let's see, let's head now over to the introduction. So for example, here where I typed this, it's just typed right in here. Uh, but anything that you wanna do that's special, for example, adding in a, uh, a header or adding in a picture, you need to add a bit of, uh, a bit of code for. Uh, so pictures are the most common thing that you're gonna be using as well as headers. So we'll go over those two. Uh, We'll go over pictures first here. So pictures are divided up into a couple different things. You can have figures where you import the picture, or you can have tables, which are another type of useful uh, diagram there, which we can go over in a bit. Uh, you've always got to begin and end your figure. Uh, this little guy here in these brackets, or in these braces rather, um, it, it shows how harsh the formatting is for it. We use capital H uh, because it keeps everything locked right to where it's need to be. If you use something different like lowercase h, it could put it after the next bit of uh, text. So you just keep a capital H. Uh, we want our centered, so we just do centering. And then this is the actual command that brings in the picture. So include graphics, you specify a width, or you can just do width of text width, which is this width here. And then you put the name of your picture. One of the good things about having this big list here is say you import your picture, and then I know that I want the general member breakdown and it will search that list for me and then I can grab it. You can add a caption to it with caption and you can add a label to it with label. Uh, the label is not so necessary, but what the label can do is in text, you can reference it. Um, so if we did something here, ref, and then you see how we've got all the figured uh, names here. Uh, so this figure is named member breakdown and then there. So this would return the number that it is, so figure one. And the reason this is good, instead of just saying figure one, is if I put a picture before this, this would update automatically. You wouldn't have to go through and do it manually, which is something that you really don't want to be doing uh, 150 pages down the line. And then you've just got the uh, end of the figure there. Uh, these lines you can almost always copy from just a previous document uh, that we've got on the team. Uh, anyone would be happy to give you these lines or give you access to a document that has these. Uh, sections are even easier. Uh, you just do a section with section. Here we are. Sections are centered. Subsections are still bolded, a bit smaller, but they're left justified. And then we do have one smaller than it. We've got sub subsection here. Uh, so you'll see we have a subsection of general system overview and sub subsection of overall system diagram. Uh, all it does is just make it a bit smaller and it goes on to the third number here. Uh, we have a bit of code up here in the front with all of our packages. Uh, to have us have a table of contents, that's really nice. Uh, shows where everything is and then we can click on stuff to go around to it. Uh, this package portion, you're almost always going to import from the document that you know has the most packages. Uh, it's not the most efficient to have packages that you won't need, uh, but in our case it doesn't really hinder our compile rate at all. So to keep everything looking nice, we just copy all these packages and we'll give them to you. Uh, we'll have a list somewhere on our SharePoint site with all these packages uh, and we'll have them in your documents so that you know they work correctly here. Uh, some of the important ones are this first one, document class. Uh, this defines the point size. Uh, we use 10 point font and then just a couple other things specifically about the uh, type of uh, paper here. It will set it out. It will lay it out differently if you choose different things other than article. Uh, and if you need to do that for some reason, you can always look it up online uh, as this is just an introduction. But yes, so let's continue here. Uh, some other fun things that we have on this document are we've got a title page. Uh, this is also going to be mostly copy and paste. Uh, this one's fairly applicable to your lab classes as well, especially if you're an EE or a CE. 
um, you're going to have a title and then you're going to include something, uh, either the MASA logo or in the case of a class it would be the university logo and then your uh, title there and then your author and then date and then we begin the document down here. But that should be everything, just a basic introduction to this portion. Uh, we can go over tables actually while we're here real quick. Let me head over here. Uh, we like the table output to you know just be a standard table, lines on all four sides of each box and then uh, just headers on the top. So you'll see tables are a bit uh, a bit interesting in how they're defined. Uh, we've also got documents on LaTeX that we use for the team uh, that just have table templates. Uh, so similar to a figure, we begin it using capital H for uh, placing it correctly, centering, and then this begin portion is where it's uh, telling the table to start. So after this, it will start reading data into the table. Uh, H line puts these horizontal lines. And then we put the data in the cells separated by ampersands. So in this one, we begin the table and we've got this many cells here. Each one of these pipes symbolizes a vertical line, you, which you can see here, there's four vertical lines. So there'll be four pipes, one, two, three, and four, which means there are three cells in between them, one, two, and three. These different values here, these are for determining the width of cells. Uh, in the templates, they're all marked as L uh, which means they'll conform to the length of whatever you put them in, of whatever you put in them, rather. Uh, these here are set to specific values so that the table doesn't get too wide for the page, which you can also, which you can always replace the L with this M here. And then it's just in centimeters, that's why there's a CM. Yeah, that's uh, simple of how the table is uh, began. And then at the end, we're just ending everything that we had, so we end the tabular and we end the table. And then you see there's another one right after it, that's why it starts again. So after you've written everything um, and you want to go through it, see how it looks, you hit the recompile button. And for most documents, it won't take very long, uh, but this is the electrical progress report. It's 150 pages, so it's going to take a bit. Uh, but here we are. It is now finished. And then what you want to do is if you want to export it, you just download it like we did earlier. And it will just download to your downloads folder or whatever location you've specified. And you can open it up there as a PDF. And one of the good things about LaTeX is it will port over our uh, skills that we had with the table of contents where we can click around with things, which is very nice. But yeah, uh, like I said, this is just an introduction, just a basic overview of how LaTeX works. Uh, and we can go over it more in meetings and things like that. And we can add on uh, other videos in the future about uh, specific types of things that we can add in LaTeX, uh, whether we go deeper dive in table or figures or anything else. Uh, but yeah, that's all for me today. Thank you very much.